So how are your sites running at the moment? Are they smooth, on time, and on budget? That'd be a dream, wouldn't it, if your sites were running like that? Or do your sites feel like there's a little bit more chaos going on? Maybe there's an overordering of materials, maybe they're not as profitable as what you want them to be, maybe they're messy, or you might be frustrated with the quality of workmanship on site by your, your team, and maybe the client's just a little bit upset with you and uh, your company at the moment. Is that how your sites are running? Well, hopefully not, but that's often the reality uh, for many construction companies out there. And oftentimes, the way our sites run, especially on longer projects, is a direct relation to how much effort has gone in prior to commencement. If there's a lack of planning on the front end, then you can be in for a world of pain for weeks or potentially months if, if it's a big project as you approach the end. So how much effort do you put in prior to commencement? Or in how much effort do you put into setting up your sites and your projects? And the real question is, what sort of things should you be focusing on? What are the top four things we're gonna to consider today that you should be focusing on so that you can set your projects up the right way? Well, one of the first mistakes that many make is not tracking the job costs and monitoring the, the budget throughout the project. So that's probably mistake number one. And often, the reason why they make the mis this mistake is because they haven't got a clear breakdown of costs. Um, maybe that's possibly because they've given the client a lump sum price um, or they haven't got a system for tracking those costs effic efficiently. So step number one is break those costs down. Even if you've won the project, um, let's say, for example, uh, you've won a project for £100,000, an extension for £100,000. Even if you've won that project, I would break those costs down and possibly break them down per trade. So you could say, you know, how much is the cost to do the groundworks? How much is the brickworks going to cost? What's the carpentry package? How much is the plastering going to cost, the electrician, things like that. So that's uh, one way of breaking down the costs if, you, if you've won a job. And that, that way it's nice and easy to monitor those costs and uh, check you're on budget as you go through. Now if you're not comfortable doing that, maybe you're just comfortable giving lump sum prices, then I would use a QS or estimating software that you can get online quite easily that will, be, will, that will easily break that project down into phases for you. Um, so that's really vital to see when you go and look at it at the end, you can think, have I overpriced certain items, um, which is great, am I really profitable on certain bits, or are there certain areas that I'm really underpricing my work? And that gets you to be able to tweak things as you go forward. So that's step number one, make sure you uh, break down the cost of the project. Step number two, following on from that, is you've got to track the costs. There's no point breaking them down at the beginning if you're not going to track them throughout. So either you yourself or someone in your admin team, you really want to make sure that everything is, that is ordered on the project has a reference number on it. So maybe the site address or, or something else that you can remember and then put all those job costs into a spreadsheet or onto an app or software, something like that. So there's plenty out there that you'll be able to track those job costs. So that's step number one and two. That's how you keep on budget when you're when you're doing your projects. Step number three is planning how long a project should take. Now this is absolutely crucial, and again, it's one that often gets missed out. We can often just go headfirst into a project and not really plan how long everything's gonna take. And this is really dangerous because imagine your projects go over time by just 10%. 10% isn't a lot really, is it? Let's say a 10 week project takes 11 weeks. You know, that's not uncommon, is it? And maybe your site's run over by even more than that. But actually, this can be hugely expensive over the course of a year. Let's imagine you're forecast to do a million pounds a year in revenue, that's, uh, that's what your plan is. But if you have 10% slippage, you might only do 900,000 pounds worth of work in that same amount of time. So your turnover should have been a million, but you've actually only done 900,000 pounds worth of work. So you've got 100,000 pounds worth of work there missing over the course of a year for just a 10% slippage, which doesn't really sound like a lot, does it? And maybe your sites are even worse than that. You're slipping 20, 30% potentially of time. It's costing you a huge amount of money. So you, what you really wanna be doing is planning your project's timeline out before you start and then be strict about reviewing those timelines regularly. Each week I'll be reviewing where you're at on that timeline. Now there's, again, loads of software out there that can do this for you. You've got uh, sites like Instagant, 
uh, it's basically you're, you're uh, building a Gantt chart or a project timeline, so Instagram's good. And there's others out there that do this really quickly and really easily, and uh, it just helps you plan your project the right way. So that's step number three, plan the project. Step number four is get your health and safety sorted before you start the works. And the problem is, this is one I see all the time, when we're really busy, often health and safety is the, the, the first thing that goes out the window, isn't it? But as a company director, especially of a, you know, a construction company, there are such heavy fines or even imprisonment if the worst happened on site. You know, if the, imagine there was a death or something like that due to health and safety negligence, you as a director could really be held accountable for that if you're not putting the right systems in place. So it's a little bit of a sobering thought, but just make sure pre-start, get your health and safety documents done and, uh, and, and filed away and, and use them throughout the project. And that just give you so much peace of mind as you go through. It doesn't take that long to do it, but it's a step that often gets missed. So there, there's four steps there that help you set up a site. And as we said, it's absolutely crucial. Um, we only covered four, but if you, if you get these things in place, I can promise you just, just these four things, if you started doing that, that would really help you uh, enable your sites to run a lot more smoothly like a, a well-oiled machine. And ultimately, what is the aim? We're trying to give you as the business owner more time, more freedom, and more money. And part of that is planning your sites to run as smoothly as possible before you even uh, step foot in them on the, on the first day. So if you'd like to work with me, there's, uh, as I said, there's only four, four things there. There's plenty of other things that we need to do to set up the perfect site. But if you'd like to work with me to get the right systems in place for your business, then send me a DM or send me a comment below and we'll have a brief call and see how I can help.